Hello, welcome to the TU Sports Extra podcast. I'm joined today by the ultimate utility player, Kelly Hines. She's uh, subbing in today for John Tranchina, who's a little under the weather. So, Kelly, you were at the press conference the other day where Kevin Wilson was introduced, and you obviously spoke to him and Rick Dixon. Uh, let's talk about Kevin Wilson first, your initial impressions of him. He just is um, a guy who who has a ton of experience, and I, I think the fact that he's been a head coach before is is um, a really good thing. So he's he's you know been through an introductory news conference, knows all the right things to say, and I just felt like he handled um, the moment and the room and everything involved really well and said all of the right things. And um, I just thought it was a, a really good introduction. And um, he answered a lot of the questions that I had, like before I even had the chance to ask them, you know, and, and just talking about how he's going to stay on at Ohio State and, and what his priorities are and everything. Like um, a lot of people don't don't do that. It's like he knew what the questions were going to be before they were asked. So um, from like a media perspective, I love that. I don't even have to ask. He, he just he, he knows what to say. So um, I was impressed with him. I'd never really been around him before. Um, I'd heard him kind of been described as like gruff and that's that's not at all like an adjective I would use to describe him like he got emotional and talking about his family and he just seemed personable and um, well spoken and just just impressive but you know I try not to get too caught up in in how things go on like you know day one because I have covered a, a lot of these introductory news conferences and that's absolutely no indication of how it's going to go for them like on all of the other days but um I did I was impressed with him just just because it was someone I, I didn't know and um I just thought that he handled everything really well yeah I agree I thought he came off well and and, and like you said it, it's a press conference let's not get too out of hand but Thought it was a really good first impression. It was good to hear him talk, and yeah, thought he thought he sounded good. Um, okay, so if you're Kevin Wilson, your first priorities are what? I mean, this is it's a tricky time to take over a program. Yeah, I I think trying to figure out the balance. Like it definitely seemed like he already had that sort of, you know, that it was the ball was rolling. Like he talked to the team the night before. Um, he obviously had made an impression on Braylon Braxton for, for Braylon to withdraw his name from the portal, um, you know, that, that, uh, next day, um, the day that, that Kevin Wilson was introduced. And, um, I think that's the, the first priority is, is getting the buy-in or starting to, to develop the relationship with the players. Um, that's his, his most important thing that he's working on right now. And, and he, he said that he's like, I, I didn't. I'm not planning to bring players here. I want the players who are here. And, um, you know, he talked about how uh, he's not working toward this, this um, December signing day. He's like, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to sign guys with the second signing day. My priority is, is building the relationship with the guys who are here. So, you know, that's obviously the most important thing, but he also is, is, you know, staying on with Ohio state through the playoffs and, he has to figure that part out, you know, how he's going to be part of those bowl preparations and, you know, get things going here. So it's a little bit tricky, but, um, you know, I think he's waiting to, to kind of finalize his staff. That's that's not something that, that is like number one on his list right now. I think he's trying to figure out of, of Phil Montgomery's staff. Is, is there anyone who would be a good fit with him? And I don't know if that that will work out. Um, but those are the things that he's working on right now. Yeah, so uh, it's I've, I've, it's interesting recruiting. I mean, it's you almost have to do uh, um, maybe you and I talked about this or somebody else. I don't know. It's like you're adding a signing day. You not only have the February signing day, you have the December signing day, and then you sort of have to continually recruit the kids you already have. Um, yeah, I mean, every yeah. everyone's going through that. It's just that his his challenge is like you know, and no offense to him, like well, obviously we know who Kevin Wilson is, but the guys on his his current roster probably didn't know who he was until oh. he was in, introduced. Um, so like you've got to recruit guys who you know a lot of those guys. You know, Phil Montgomery was beloved by the players, and so um, a lot of those guys were like, well, if it's not if it's not you know, Philip or his assistants. And I, I don't know why I would stay here. So that's why, you know, you started seeing guys going to the portal. So um, I think 
getting Braylon on board was so important because he's he's he has a huge amount of influence with the rest of the team. So having one one guy like that say, "Oh yeah, no, I'm in. I'm 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 going to stay here." I think that that will help, but it it's tricky I, and I think you're seeing that everywhere and it's it's not just when there's a coaching change. I mean, you see what's happening with OSU, which is, you know, the, the beat that I'm actually on. Um, and, uh, you know, it's tough to, to keep guys around, especially if things aren't going exactly how they envisioned. If you're losing games and guys aren't, you know, being used maybe in the way that they want to be used, the, the door is, is so wide open for them to leave. It's so easy to leave. I think it's it can be harder to get guys to stay. And I think, you know, NIL is a, a, a big part of that. And, you know, for those Tulsa guys, you know, they're probably thinking, well, I could go somewhere else and actually make some money and, and maybe win more. And maybe they're thinking with Kevin Wilson or with a new coach, it's going to be like a, a rebuild. And, you know, if you have limited years left, maybe only like one or two, do you, do you really want to start over? Um, but Kevin Wilson said, I'm, I'm not looking for a four or five year rebuild. Like he's already 61, you know, he, he wants to, to win now. So, um, and I think with the conference being what it's, what it will be next season in the American, I, I think that it's going to be a lot more feasible for, for Tulsa to, to win games. Um, but that's a separate topic, but, um, I think it is a challenge for all coaches trying to figure out how, how to keep their guys that they have. But then also you have to keep in mind that you won't be able to hold on to all of them. So you're you're kind of recruiting to like an unknown number and an unknown, you know, you don't know which positions you're going to have, you know, openings. And I think I think it's just difficult, but you know, they, they get paid a lot of money to figure that out. I want to ask you about Philip Montgomery, what you said a minute ago. You know, I think and John Tranchina on this podcast uh, and I have talked about this this season about how popular Montgomery was with his players, and you would be more equipped to answer this than anybody. Why, and not not doubting it, not questioning it, I get it, I understand it, but why was he so popular? What was it about him? You, you, you saw sides of him that we didn't see. I think he really was part of that blue collar um, underdog mentality of, you know, remember that, that one season when, um, the team had had shirts that said um, Tulsa versus everybody. Like they, they really embraced it was like them against the world. Um, and maybe that that went too far at times because I don't really think anyone was like out to get them. But, um, you know, you saw that in the locker room when they won games. They, you know, Philip would do the um, I got you, you got me chant. That was that was a big thing with them. And I but I, I felt like that was legitimate. So I think. Him seeking out guys who maybe were a little bit under the radar, developing them and going to battle with them. Like, you know, they they, they had some ups and downs for sure, but I, I never saw him losing, you know, um, like the locker room or like the players always, always. And even like talking to Justin Wright yesterday about, you know, um, committing to OSU, like just the way that... Um, Phillips players talked about him. Um, I don't know that I've ever covered a coach who, who players felt that that way, like across the board about just like they would they would do anything for him because they knew he, he would do anything for them. And I'm sure that's true of other coaches. It just, um, I don't know, it was just something different. And I think some of that was, you know, Phillips experience at the high school level, you know, really um, becoming like a mentor and like a father figure to, to players, um, that, that meant a lot to those guys. And I'm not saying other coaches don't do that, but Philip especially did that. And I think that's why when you have such a bond with your head coach, cause it's not, it's not that way everywhere. A lot of places you have that bond with your position coach, and maybe you don't deal with the head coach as much. That's when you're going to see guys, um, you know, be more likely to go to the portal because, it's not going to be the same with a different coach. And I'm not saying it's it's going to be better or worse. It's just going to be different. And um, having to, you know, start a new relationship, if you're going to do that, those guys maybe would feel like I might as well start that somewhere else instead of staying here and starting that with a new coach. I think the fact that they beat Houston in the season finale, finale is probably a testament to exactly what you're talking about. They yeah, they, I, they showed up for their coach in the last game of the year that really didn't mean anything. 
Yeah, and I think um, you saw that like throughout Phillips' time, and you saw the way that he got them fired up to play, you know, Ohio State and Cincinnati and teams that they had really no business competing with. Um, you saw them, you know, basically play their best games against really good teams. And I think like Phillip instilled that confidence in them. And obviously they they lost to a lot of teams that they should should have beaten. But um they just always had that underdog mentality that that really suited them well given how how overlooked and under recruited a lot of the players were and they they all bought into that. And you know, obviously it comes down to wins and losses and everyone understands that. But um there was just, you know, a a certain element with with Phillips teams that um, made them interesting to to cover and, and interesting to watch. Any sense of what might be next for Philip Montgomery? I'm guessing he'll have an opportunity to be an offensive coordinator somewhere. Um, I think that uh, he obviously had a ton of a ton of success doing that before he came to Tulsa and um, or quarterbacks coach. He obviously was really good at that also. Um, I think you see that that guys get opportunities. It's just, you know, he 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 may be picky about where he wants to go. Um, you know, like Jake Spavital, you know, things didn't work out for him at, at Texas State. And then he he got um the OC job at Cal, which is like a pretty, pretty good job to have. Um, you see guys, you know, land on their feet when they've been able to show what they can do um in their career. So I expect that Philip will have an opportunity like that. You had a, an interesting conversation, at least so it so it read that way in the paper anyway, with Rick Dixon, and and he got emotional uh, at the podium talking about Phil Montgomery and kind of the process of finding his replacement. Well, what do you kind of want you kind of recap what you thought of your conversation with Rick Dixon? Yeah, I mean Rick is um, you know super invested, and and I. I I don't know what I really expected when he came back to Tulsa. He came out of retirement. He, he it was almost like he felt like he had had some responsibility to his alma mater to like help them out. And I just didn't know how how that would go because that's that's a big undertaking. That's not an easy job. And so he really um, had a great. He's had great relationships with the coaches um, at Tulsa, but especially it seemed like with Philip. He he you know he's out at practice quite a bit, and he just seemed to have a really good rapport with him. And I think it's difficult when you have to be involved in that decision and in those conversations with someone who you became close with over the course of a few years. So um, I think that was hard on him. And then, you know, I, I think he coped through that by immediately throwing himself into like a very rigorous um, coaching search and, um you know, he had seven, he told me he had about 70 some names on the initial list. And that's, I mean, that's really ambitious. Um, and so he got it down to about 20 and that that's a, about how many candidates he was doing, you know, Zoom interviews with. And like, you know, close to 10 of those made it to the second round of Zoom interviews. And then, then you, you know, you're just obviously paring it down as you go, but it, it was, it was a pretty like relentless week for him. And yeah. um he I think handles those really well, but he he talks a lot. He is a very chatty guy. So um he told me that he was like dehydrated from the week. And I'm like, that's probably because like you're you're just like on the go constantly. And um his he sent his wife out of town because she she he was gonna be working from home mostly and uh um, she went to go visit their grandkids. And so she like made like two gallons of, of soup for him to eat for like the week. And so we like lived on like soup and, uh, she made like passion tea for him and like, but you know, he just like hunkered down and like, um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, with all of the experience that he's, he's been through this many times as an athletic director, not just at Tulsa, but other places. Um, but he, he knew what they were looking for. And they never really, um, like the, the three finalists, um, those never like were out of the picture. They were always in the picture. So um, they just kind of, things fell into place and it, it got to a certain point. They they brought 
you know, a few candidates in um, for in-person interviews. And I think it worked out well that um, like Ohio State wasn't in a, in a um, conference championship game because Kevin Wilson was available. <laughs> and so he, he was able to come in. And I'm, I'm sure um, talking to someone like him who has the experience that, that he's had as, as a head coach before, I'm sure that was very appealing for Tulsa. So Justin Wright, you're not done dealing with him yet. Uh, you okay, but the him. only only bad thing about that, and I told him when I talked to him yesterday, like, you know, because he's a first year player, I won't be able to interview him. He's like 22 years old. That's and I, I've interviewed him many times, and um, now I was like, well, well, I'll. I'll yeah. This is it. Thing you play, but won't get to talk to you. And but he's one of my favorite players I've ever covered, just because he, he, and this is what I love about, um, you know, really wanting, like, really like covering a team, like for for several years. You get you not only get to know the players and coaches, but you see them grow. You see the players grow up, and that's yeah. kind of how I feel about Justin. He went from being this like. Um, really intense player to like being very mature and still playing with intensity, but like they like reined it in a little bit. And I remember Joseph Gillespie, who was his position coach um, for his first few years, like talking to me about that. Like we we had we knew he had the fire. We just needed to reel it in a little bit. Um, but Justin has a big personality, and um, he was I'm sure one of the guys who who saw an opportunity to do something different when there was a position or a, a coaching change and he saw an opportunity to um you know he he has aspirations to play in the NFL as most of these guys do but like I feel like that's possible for him and having a little bit more experience um you know, with a power five school, um, I think that that makes sense. But, you know, he was in the portal for like an hour before he heard from OSU and mm. they were the first school to contact him. And um, his he's married, which a lot of college players are not. But uh, he um, obviously uh, his wife is a big factor in the decision um, because she's able to keep her job um, in the Tulsa area. And, um, you know, that that makes it a lot easier for for them. So. Um, it was super fun talking to him. Um, he is the only person I know who has their nickname tattooed on their body, which is, is a bold choice, but his nickname, is. um, he's, he's, uh, he has psycho above his yeah. left knee to where people like can see it. It's very visible, uh, when he's playing and that, that was a nickname that he got, um, playing, uh, youth football and, um, no one on the team uh, on TU's team really knew that that was his nickname until he got it tattooed. And he's just he's just different. He's really a fun personality. But I, I he said that he's looking forward to taking um, the experience that he had as a TU captain, as a TU leader, to a different team, and still still being able to be in that role. He's hoping, you know, obviously it takes time to earn trust and all of that, but. I feel like that's possible for him just because of the, like the um, team attitude and just the personality that he has. All right. Well, Kelly, what do you say we leave it there for the, for this week? I think that sounds good. This is my second one this week. So I feel like that's good. It's it's what utility players do. It's what you do. You yeah. just, you just fill, fill in the gaps. So all right. Well, uh, appreciate you guys checking us out. You can uh, listen to us for free on Apple, Google, or Spotify. So download us, check us out. We also have other podcasts at the Tulsa World, so they're they're good too. Go check them out. Uh, Kelly, not was, as good. They're good, just not as good. They're okay. They're, they, they, yeah, let's. They're not as good. Um, what do you got going today? Where, where are you going from here? Um, I I have to get back to my actual beat so yeah. I, i'll be going over to stillwater um for some basketball availability osu plays virginia tech uh this weekend so that should be a good game it's good it's, on, it's in brooklyn it's it's not a home game ah. all right we'll talk soon all right sounds good